Oh, hey, Dad. What are you doing? I'm exporting. Just exporting, not importing? I'm only exporting, okay? Oh, uh, okay. In this video, I'm going to show you what I think are the best export settings for YouTube. All right, let's go. The last thing we need to do before exporting is set our in and out points. To do this, you take your playhead and move it to the start of your video. Right click and mark in. Then you go to where you want your video to end, right click and mark out. Now it's going to just export whatever is from here to here in my timeline. I like to do it this way instead of exporting the entire sequence because then you don't have to worry about random clips like lurking down your timeline somewhere that'll accidentally export with the rest of the video. At this point, we're ready to export. So we can either click Control M on a PC or go to File, Export, Media, which will bring up the export window. For a YouTube export, make sure your file format is H.264. That exports to an MP4, which YouTube likes. It has a small enough file size and keeps really good quality. If you want a high resolution master or working file, you should use a different file format like QuickTime. As far as preset goes, I always select match source high bitrate and then customize from there. But only choose this if you know that your sequence settings match what you want in terms of your export settings. For example, if we look below, we can see that my source or sequence settings are 3840 by 2160, also known as 4K UHD, and 23.976 frames per second, which is exactly what my output or export settings are right here because I selected match source. However, if your sequence or source is 4K like this and you want to export in 1080, you would simply change your preset up here to something like high quality 1080p or maybe this YouTube 1080p down at the bottom. You can see when we do that, that now this in our output, our export, changes to 1920 by 1080 instead of the original 3840 by 2160. And just so you know that as soon as you change anything, like let's say your bitrate here, for example, the preset will change to custom, which is completely normal. Next, we're going to deal with our bitrate settings, which we can find down here in the video tab. Just scroll past everything until you see bitrate settings. The first thing to take note of is the bitrate encoding menu. In there, we have three options. We have CBR, VBR one pass, and VBR two pass. CBR means constant bitrate. And you can see there's only one slider here. So whatever we actually set that to, that's what's gonna be the bitrate that's applied throughout the entire video. VBR means variable bitrate. For variable, if you notice for VBR one pass and VBR two pass, you can see there's target bitrate and maximum bitrate. What VBR does is it dedicates more information to the parts of your video that have more colors or details or action and lowers the bitrate for the parts that don't. The difference between VBR one and two is that in VBR two pass, Premiere is going to analyze the footage the first time through. And then during the second time through, it's actually going to render and export using the information that it learned from the first time through. The only negative is that it obviously takes twice as long. If time is not a factor, then always use VBR two pass, especially on more complex edits. Wow. And just so you know, with the latest update 14.2, Premiere Pro can now take advantage of hardware encoding, which will make your export around three times faster for both H.264 and HEVC, if your computer has a compatible NVIDIA or AMD graphics card. You can change from software encoding to hardware encoding under export settings right here. When using hardware encoding, you do lose the ability to choose VBR two pass, however, and you can also no longer set maximum bitrate when using VBR one pass. Next, we have to decide what bitrate to use. And for that, we need to decide whether we're gonna export in 4K or in 1080. So there's typically two lines of thought when choosing which bit weight, bit weight, bit rates to use. The first option is to export using the YouTube presets or following YouTube's suggested bit rates. For YouTube's 4K preset, you can see that their target bit rate is 40. And for their 1080 preset, you can see that their target bit rate is 16. I personally tend to go with option number two and export with higher bit rates because I feel like YouTube is gonna compress it anyway. So you may as well feed it as much information as you can. For a 1080 export, YouTube suggests using a bit rate between eight and 15. If you want a high bit rate 1080 export, go with double. So go to 24 and 30. For a 4K export, YouTube suggests using between 35 and 45 for the bit rate. 
If you want a high bitrate 4K export, use maybe at least 60 for the target and like 80 for the max. The final item to consider for our video settings is whether to check the box. The simple answer is that it's meant for people that film in 10-bit or more. Or if you have used any video effects and transitions that support high bit depth processing, which are indicated by a 32 BPC badge that appears to the right of the effect name in the effects panel. But you can check it anyway. As far as audio goes, it's really pretty simple. We just got to make sure our sample rate is 48,000. Make sure your audio quality is high and that your bit rate is 320. Another big question that people always have is whether they should use maximum render parallel. You only really need to check this box if you've scaled your footage in any way. Like if you upscaled 1080 footage to a 4K timeline, and especially if you scaled 4K footage down to a 1080 sequence. Having said that, it's probably best to just check it off every time. And then there's the question of whether we should check the previews box as well. Previews relies on smart rendering to speed up your export. The only problem? It's not compatible with MP4. So if you're exporting to MP4, don't click. It's not worth it, man. Next, we'll click on the blue text beside output name. This is where we name our video and decide where we want to save it on our computer. I'm going to name it export video test. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to pick my export vid folder and I'm going to export it there. I'm going to click save in that folder. You can now save these settings as a custom preset to use for future projects right here. And now all you have to do is choose between Q and export. Q sends your video to media encoder to be exported. This program runs in the background, allowing you to still work in Premiere while the export happens. It's also good for batch exports. So if you want to export a bunch of videos, but if you're only exporting one video, then it's better to just hit export. Okay, so that's everything you need to know about exporting videos for YouTube. You know you're being filmed right now in the background. Uh, okay, go, get out. Okay. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I will catch you next time.